Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Kevin Harai, and I'm with an organization called Fly Away Homes. Uh, in essence, what we're trying to do is create a new model where we systematize the buy right modular construction of uh, permanent supportive housing uh, using social impact equity. And so the Flyway Homes model, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's designed to be rep replicable, scalable, um, cost effective and rapid, um, which basically leads to um, the housing being affordable for those that most need it, uh, which is what, what we know as su uh, permanent supportive housing or supportive housing. And so the way that we sort of uh, do that uh, are these different elements of systematizing. I'm, I'm gonna go into each of these, but systematizing um, reduces the soft costs and hard costs by, by increasing the efficiencies in the design and by um, iterating it over and over again, it becomes uh, more like a manufacturing process than reinventing the wheel every time you build a new apartment building. Um, and uh, from a scalable perspective, you know, we wanted to be able to design a model that once existing, you know, it would be able to uh, scale up and, you know, impact numbers in the tens of thousands of people um, in order to basically serve uh, where, you know, the, the clients that we've been working with uh, to this point and in partnership with the People Concern, uh, which is a, one of LA's uh, larger social service agencies, uh, kind of recognize that being able to have a scalable model where supportive housing is available to uh, their clients is really the answer to ending homelessness. Um, it's an agency that focuses on, you know, working with the homeless population to, to eventually, you know, find them housing and reintegrate them into society. And so, you know, a key element of the scalable model, obviously, is funding. Um, and a lot of the traditional methods, uh, I'm sure we talked about, were, you know, use federally subsidized type of funding models. Uh, low income housing tax credits uh, is, is a big uh, resource for developers building this type of housing. Um, but we also sort of recognize the limitations um, and also the costs associated with, with those types of funding. Um, and sort of by, by, by doing what we're doing, we're learning and understanding uh, what those barriers are and quanti quantifying what the cost to those barriers might be um, in order to understand what we could do to, um, you know, uh, create this model that uh, overcomes those challenges. And uh, so from that perspective, social impact equity funding is, is a huge part of our model. And so it's essentially what that means, it's uh, creating a fund of socially responsible individuals that are putting up money, um, expecting a return on their equity, um, but maybe <clears throat> willing to trade part of the, you know, maybe a, a higher return <clears throat> for a lower return with the understanding what, what, what the capital is doing um, as sort of a residual benefit, or, you know, some people call it a triple bottom line. Um, <clears throat> and so by using the social impact equity fund, uh, put up by people that I'm that I'm talking about, a lot of those uh, barriers are removed. You know, the the constraints aren't as, wouldn't wouldn't exist like they do when you when you're using federal federal funds, as an example. Um, and so that was a big part of sort of the experiment. Could we raise private funding, whether it be through individuals or corporations that have money to invest for this social purpose? Um, and again, you know, the idea is to create this production model as opposed to uh, building, you know, starting from scratch every site you have, uh, which obviously has its own costs um, when you're not doing something uh, over and over again. Um, and so with this sort of concept in mind, uh, the idea is to, at the end of the day, create this model, scale it up, and the result would be a high quality, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, when you do this sort of production type model, you manufacture off site and you bring it on site. So it does create benefits of uh, like green benefits, um, but build environmentally friendly PSH at an affordable cost in a time frame, you know, that, that we can address the issue of homelessness. And that was generally the concept. And so um, we ended up building a couple of projects. The first project was really a pilot it was literally funded by, you know, 60 friends and family. I think there are 65 investors, uh, you know, each putting up units of $50,000 at a time to see if we could actually do this, you know, the social impact equity fund to build supportive housing. 
and that worked. And you know, we housed 33 people um, at around the cost figures that we were targeting. And so this is our second project, the one that's up on the screen. Um, and again, this is sort of a another iteration where we sort of learned from the first go around uh, certain things, and we try to implement them here and streamline the process. Um, uh, and then, you know, again, we, we learned a lot going from the first project at Colden to this project on 82nd Street. And what the goal is, is to now do uh, three projects at once. Um, and we've secured grants, or, you know, we, we actually won a housing innovation challenge from the city of LA uh, that allocated us funding um, to sort of anchor, uh, you know, these three projects that we're going to build that are going to be you know, 40 to 50 units each and sort of allow us to see if we could scale this model or what kind of efficiencies could be achieved by doing three projects at once. Um, in order, in other words, uh, ordering three buildings from possibly the same manufacturer, getting some savings there, uh, using, because we're doing sort of smaller site uh, development, you know, amortizing the cost of, a, you know, uh, a, a smaller three smaller jobs is more attractive to these contractors than uh, you know one smaller job on its own and so to see what kind of pricing benefits we could possibly do with the idea that this would be sort of a, a second iteration or proof of concept um, to the larger scalable model um, and so this is sort of the you know the second step and and what kind of what when we talk about what kind of savings will we achieve from say repl replicability if we could achieve it you know we, we kind of modeled out some of those numbers and you can see it's it's significant it's not um you know a 10 percent savings it's uh you know it, it, it is a, a significant savings that if if we can implement all these at the same time in the ideal world um would really get us to our goals um but as we all know there are challenges and uh you know uh, we're not quite here yet but these are the goals um, and some of the additional impacts, you know, that that, that doing this uh, sort of model or, or scaling this type of model would realize are, um, you know, mentioned here, right, racial equity, you know, 77 77% of the target population um, of the properties that we're building are targeted towards people of color, um, and, you know, people with disabilities and um, health issues. Um, and, you know, it's because we come from where we come from, it's definitely a conscious design, you know, a, a tenant centric design. Um, and so, you know, we just want to try to create a model that uh, will be scalable and, you know, taking all the other considerations um, that sort of go along with being able to have a model that is scalable um, and being able, you know, having a model that could be embraced by, you know, uh, the, the majority of the population. Um, and so some of the benefits, again, you have to sort of do it by proving it, but it's we it actually by by building these projects and kind of proving the model, it reduces this uh, not in my backyard, the nimbyism um, that you see because it's sort of people then understand really what it is that we are talking about when we talk about supportive housing and they're not threatened by it and it actually adds value to their community in, in a lot of uh, a lot of cases. And so just to sort of mention again, Flyaway, the genesis of Flyaway comes from a committee of the people concerned, this agency saying, look, um, board members and concerned individuals, um, we have clients that are ready, you know, we, we've been working with them, they're successfully ready to now find housing, but we just don't have any housing that's affordable for them. Um, and so it sort of comes out of this agency's committee thinking about how can we possibly do this, <clears throat> which I think is important um uh, to understand where uh flyaway sort of comes from and the angle that they are building or you know, we're builders per se but we really are interested in figuring out how to uh house people with disabilities and um you know families and children that this agency is already working with that um you know are ready to become uh no, no longer uh, be homeless if only they had a home to move into and so again these are some of the interesting you know sort of how how flyaway came to be it was co-developed um in conjunction with the people concerned um and i think it can definitely meet some of the demand that's out there at least uh supplement uh the different models that exist and be part of the solution um and you know if it really does scale i think it could be a bigger part than not um 
so accelerating accelerating the innovation uh, again with these grants sort of the pitch was if if you allow us this funding you know it will it would let us try say three projects at once and understand what those outcomes would be from you know um, doing this at scale and what the results then would be as far as you know the cost to house people the potential benefit the the potential benefits uh to the government say for the savings in police and medical needs of that individual that's now housed as opposed to being on the streets and requiring constant medical police fire attention um, and so you know by by studying these outcomes you know we'll be able to sort of make a better case for why uh, this is a, a worthy sort of model and you know flyaway homes has never uh, intended to build all this these 20 thousands of units it's that you know, we want to sort of set um, set out a model that others can kind of replicate and, and, and gravitate to and kind of um, help help, uh, you know, to, to jump on the bandwagon and do this um, as a private venture. Uh, I think this could totally be scaled. And so um, these are the different things that we're working on at Flyaway to, to get us to where we want to go. Um, and these are the different um, elements that we're looking to sort of streamline and systematize. Um, you know, uh, city government obviously understands the, the zoning and the permitting and the entitlement, um, but their land just in, in the city of LA in, in general, in, in California, uh, is a highly prized commodity, limited resource. And so, you know, finding the, the, the right land that's zoned appropriately uh, for this type of development um is a challenge and so i think uh state government you know uh, federal governments are looking for ways to uh, allow for more housing to be built um and sort of you know there's an argument for densification whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing um, but i think a lot of these uh, policies are trying to address some of these systematic challenges um and then you know kit aparts this modular construction i know it, it is it, it's really um cool and trendy and it uh on paper it sounds really like it could save a lot of time the issue is that it's just not a fully mature industry um but i think that it's well on its way uh it's definitely not a new industry by any means um, but i think it's uh in, in the near future it will finally come into its own to be you know done at scale <clears throat> to where um, I think it, the, the costs are becoming so high for traditional construction that it's basically becoming prohibitive where this is going to be the only alternative where you could do anything for a reasonable cost. And so now that that's sort of a reality, um, you know, real money and real uh, effort is being put behind how to, you know, figure out factory built housing. So I think that that's um, on its way definitely will lower cost of housing in general, not just for supportive housing, but just a matter of time. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Um, and, you know, limited number of suppliers for the types of work that we do because it's such a regulated industry. Um, I think that if we were to, to use private funds, you know, where we don't have to have uh, the types of bonding requirements that come with a lot of federal funding, um, would allow for obviously more competition, lower prices, um, and that's really what, what we're trying to prove out. Um, so again, this is sort of our first project. We're really proud of it. These are pictures that were taken um, by one of my uh, Peninsula High School buddies, uh, uh, and he took them, I don't know, a few months ago. So this is two years uh, having uh, housed 33 people. Um, and I can tell you, being the property manager for the property, I would say probably 90% of the tenants that are there uh, were the original tenants. You know, a lot, a lot of them are families with kids that are have gone through COVID where, you know, now they have a place where they can study and do their Zoom. And, um, you know, I can sort of, I have the benefit of being able to see, uh, you know, and understand firsthand sort of the individuals that uh, this type of housing benefits. And so, um, that's why sort of flyaways of it's a volunteer organization we're a nonprofit and none of us get paid because you know we sort of believe that if we can figure this out you know the benefits to the individuals that it will eventually help um, would far outweigh any sort of time that we can put time and commitment we can put into 
trying to crack the model. So that in a nutshell is what Flyaway is. And I think that's the end of my deck. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm not sure where we are on time, uh, but uh, I'm glad to elaborate on any, any specific element that I mentioned. Um, I also don't want to bore you guys with, with, top, uh, with uh, topics that you're not interested in. So let me know. Thank you very much. Okay.